Well, good morning and welcome to Next Step. I'm Pastor Frank Suglio, and with me as always is Pastor Pedro Morales. How are you doing today, Pastor? We're okay. We're, um, I say okay only because, unfortunately, my team, our team, I should say, lost last night, and they're out of the playoffs. So, anyway, um, <laughs> uh, spiritually, I'm doing great. Amen, uh, amen. Physically and emotionally, uh, <laughs> better. That's right, that's right. Well, hopefully this will be an encouragement to us as we talk about the very uh, important, essential topic today that is very near and dear to our heart, and that is uh, the, the Christian taking their next step when it comes to soul winning. Amen. I, I, it is one of my favorite, absolute favorite topics to not only talk about, but to practice mm-hmm. as a Christian, uh, being able to share our, 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 our testimony or share our faith, uh, witness, evangelize. It is uh, the Lord's last command it should be our first concern. Yeah, and, and uh, the Great Commission, as we call it often, was given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ five times recorded in Scripture. Uh, all, all four of the Gospels, as well as the book of Acts. And we're going to primarily focus on Matthew 28, uh, verses 18 through 20, because we've been dealing with that uh, recently. Uh, so we're going to primarily focus there, but it is recorded very often in Scripture. And again, it's, it, it, if, if the Lord says it once, it's important. If he says it twice, it's even more important. If he says it as many times as five, uh, it, it's, it's, it's essential. And so let me ask you, Pastor, who, who should go soul winning? Who should go soul winning? Well, to me, it's very obvious the Bible teaches that every Christian, every believer uh, should be a soul winner. Um, you know, uh, we are Christians, we're Christ followers, disciples of Christ, and his main reason for coming to earth was to reach people. Uh, he says, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. That was his main purpose. Obviously, he had other purposes, but that was the main purpose. And if we're going to be a follower of his, then that should be one of our main purposes as well. Yeah, and, and you know, as a, as, a, as a young, saved, you know, baby Christian, uh, I used to think that the pastors went out as often as they did because they were pastors. And it wasn't long before uh, Pastor Folger corrected me and he said, you know, Frank, I, I don't go out so winning because I'm a pastor. I go out because I'm a Christian. Absolutely. Amen. And I'm glad uh, you said that. That segues for me into Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, and, and we talked about this on one of the previous podcasts. <clears throat> and But this is very important for us to look at it from this perspective. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. Uh, where the Bible says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And I always point out to people, I say, notice what it says. He gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Okay, we would consider these people the leaders, uh, the, the, the folks in positions of leadership and authority within the local New Testament church. <clears throat> but notice what he says. He gave those people that fill those positions for the perfecting of the saints, for the growing, the maturing of the saints. Well, who are the saints? The saints are every Christian, every saved person, including us, including the prophets and teachers and preachers, right? So it's talking about those positions are given to help every Christian grow. And then it says, why do the Christians need to grow? For the work of the ministry. And, and so, uh, just to use us as an illustration, you know, when I was a layman down in Florida being discipled, you know, a baby Christian, you were a pastor on the church staff there, um, and, and you, you know, taught me not only the word, but you also taught me sewing as we went out, right? And so, um, it was something that you were, yes, teaching me, but then we were going together, uh, the two of us, to go do it. Absolutely. So, the teaching part of it uh, is done by not only verbalizing it, but also displaying it uh, in action. And then it says the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry is not just for the pastors, not just for the deacons, not just for the Sunday school teachers. It's for every Christian. The work of the ministry is for every single saint. And what is the work of the ministry? Well, the verse gives us the definition. It's for the edifying of the body of Christ. The work of the ministry is growing the church. That means adding souls uh, to salvation, by sal- to the kingdom of God, rather, by salvation, and so that's how we grow the church, and that's how we edify the church. That's the work of the ministry. Yeah, and every fa- every facet of the Great Commission is in there, right? People getting saved, baptized, edifying as far as building up the, the, the quantity of the church, uh, but also the quality through discipleship of edifying the, the, the body. 
Uh, and that's why churches should have discipleship programs, soul winning programs, and uh, opportunities as well. And so again, we, you know, again, just to review, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. That word power is not only talking about the actual power itself, as in like the power of the gospel, but also in the power of the or the authority. And so he's saying, I have, you know, I have the power uh, and the authority, and I'm giving it to uh, the New Testament local church. Verse 19 says, then who's to go? Well, every born again Christian that's a, that's been you know baptized and is a member of a church is supposed to go through the the local church. It says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I like this quote, Pastor Sully. I want to share this quote from Dr. Curtis Hudson. And um, he's a great preacher of yesteryear who's been with the Lord for decades now. But uh, he was a big-time proponent of biblical soul winning. And he said this, he says, and I quote, Soul winning is not a request. It is a responsibility. Soul winning is not an opportunity. It is an obligation. The only alternative to soul winning is disobedience to a clear command of Scripture. Everybody is to be involved. Nobody is excluded. End quote. And I and I and I to that would say Amen. That's a wonderful quote from a from a wonderful you know uh, missionary that the Lord used in a mighty way. And so now we know clearly from Scripture who should go soul winning. And so so Pastor Ross, let me ask you: How should we go soul winning? How how is it that we should go soul winning? Well, the Lord Jesus Christ gave us the example of Scripture. He sent out his disciples two by two. Uh, he uh, obviously said, you know, I'm going to send you two by two, but I'm going to be with you as you go. And so uh, he's with us. It's his power. You know, as you mentioned in Matthew 28, uh, verse 18, he has all power, but he, he transfers that authority to us as his disciples, as his uh, Christians. And so now we go two by two, but, but he's going with us. He's going before us, and he is the one empowering us to do that. And so uh, soul winning should be done. Now, again, that doesn't mean that I can't lead someone to Christ that I happen to meet at the grocery store and I'm not with a soul winning partner. Uh, that, that Again, we need to be soul conscious at all times. Uh, we need to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit when he tells us to hand someone a tract or to witness to someone or to you know encourage that person spiritually. Then whether we have a soul winning partner with us or not, we need to do that. But the organized formulated plan of soul winning uh, from the local New Testament church should be empowered by the Lord uh, two by two uh, going out and, and witnessing. Amen. Yeah, and, and you mentioned uh, verse 18 again in Matthew chapter 28, but also in verse 20, he said, and lo, I am with you all and even to the end of the world. And you're talking about that power being transferred from the Lord Jesus Christ, the authority, but also the power, the strength to be able to do it. Um, through the local church, and, and the avenue of that is is seen in the in another the last recorded uh, Great Commission verse in Acts chapter one verse eight. He said, "But ye shall receive power, not only authority, but also the actual strength power of itself, uh, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth." Yeah, I love the fact that we can know that yes, we have the authority. We have the power for strength, but not just the power for strength, the power also for ability. A lot of people think, well, I, you know, I, I can't do that, or I can't speak, or I can't communicate, or I can't, you know, <laughs> uh, Pastor Suglio is pointing at himself right here. We were all there at some point. We were all there when we were scared to death of speaking about spiritual things, speaking, bro broaching the topic of the Bible with a perfect stranger. We, of course, that's intimidating. Of course, that's uh, scary. But he will give us the power. He will give us the strength. He will give us the ability to, to be able to do it. Again, we talked about it yesterday. If we want to do it bad enough, we'll work at it. We'll develop it. We will prioritize it. We will make it happen. Will we be uh, uh, very proficient right off the get-go? Obviously not. It'll take practice. It'll take trial and error, just like Bible reading and prayer time or devotion. It's going to take some trial and error. You're going to make mistakes. Uh, I've been soul winning for, you know, since basically since I've been saved for 27 years, and I still make mistakes when I go out and, and witness. Uh, I don't know everything there is to know about the Bible, but God tells me he'll, he's going to be with me. He's going to empower me. Uh, I need to obey regardless of how I feel.
yeah, we can't let the fear of failure keep us from even saying it. You know, I know I used to play basketball and we used to always say you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Like if you're so fearful to take the shot, you miss every shot because you're not taking any. There's no way of scoring, and it's the same way uh, when going soul winning. And uh, I, I do. Do you remember the first time you asked me uh, to speak at a door that we were going up to? I, I don't remember specifics, but I'm you know I kind of sort of remember. You probably remember better than I do. So so I remember. Uh, and again, you you trained me. You were there, and, and you didn't rush me by any means. But when you were finally trying to get me to kind of come out of my shell. I remember looking at you thinking, like, are you nuts? What is the wrong? I, I remember thinking, I, I thought this guy knew what he was talking about. <laughs> this guy's crazy. He's going to let me speak to somebody about their soul. <laughs> amen. Well, hey, I, I think it worked out, right? Yes, amen. Um, Praise the Lord. Yeah, it's, that's the thing. People have to understand, look, it's not about forcing someone to do anything. It's about encouraging them. It's yeah. about leading them to say, look, I know you're not comfortable doing this. I know that this is not natural for you, but it, it's not, generally speaking, it's not natural for anyone, mm. you know, even myself. Uh, generally speaking, it's not normal, but it's right. It's it's right for us to do this. And so the flesh doesn't want to do anything that's good and right. And, and I, I use I use a very crude example with people. I say, look, you know, my flesh is lazy. My flesh, you know, my flesh wants to sleep in. My flesh doesn't want to brush my teeth. My flesh doesn't want to, you know, take vitamins. My flesh doesn't want to eat vegetables. You know, there's lots of things that my flesh doesn't want to do, but they're good and right for me to do. And I need to force myself to do them. You know what I mean? Yeah, Pastor no, absolutely. 100%. Uh, and I remember, you know, I thought that only I was fearful when I found out that yourself or, you know, Pastor Folger or Pastor Mix, you know, people that have been doing it for years still get that feeling beforehand. It made me feel good because I realized, yeah, we're all humans and it is, it's an awkward, you know, position to be put in. Uh, but that's why, you know, that's part of the reason why the Lord sent us out two by two, a soul winner and basically a soul winner in training that's there to be the, the, the uh, you know, the silent partner, pray, you know, take care of distractions and things like that. And I got really good in that role. And when, when, when the, you know, when I finally built up confidence, not in myself, but in the Lord, then the Lord was able to use me. And then you were able to multiply yourself. Because then again, instead of you just going out with you and me, now we were able to make, you know, twice as many visits with you and somebody else and me and somebody else. And we're training others as well. And so you made a great point earlier. And I don't want to shortchange that. I want to actually build on that. Uh, we, we need to 100% always be soul conscious. Uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to, to guide and lead us to divine appointments. And again, when we're walking in the Spirit, we're going to be getting those divine appointments. Um, but besides that, which it always needs to be going on, uh, more specifically, trying to talk about, we're talking about the uh, organized soul winning. So when should we go soul winning? When should we go soul winning? So this, this tails into our uh, participation and our inclusion uh, membership in a church, right? Because... God works through the local New Testament church. He promised to, to empower. He promised to work through the local New Testament church. This is why we need to be part of a local New Testament church. We need to be members. Uh, and so we go when the local New Testament church has an organized time to go out. Different churches have different times, different days. Generally speaking, most Baptist churches is either Tuesday night uh, and or Saturday morning or a combination of those things. You know, I've seen some churches go Monday night, other churches go Thursday night, whatever. Whenever your local church, by the way, this is a telltale sign of a good local New Testament church. Yeah, true if church, they, yeah. That's right. If they, a true, right, a true, that's a good way to put it. If they have a, a organized, specified weekly, at least weekly, um, at the very least monthly time to go out, witnessing and sharing the faith yeah and, and you know again this is primarily for our church family but those who may be listening outside of our church family that, that maybe don't don't know um you know our church is uh starting a church planning ministry and pastor morales is going to be uh the first church plan planter out going to baltimore and uh we went to kind of survey the area in the city of baltimore and we couldn't find one church in this area that was doing any type of, you know, gospel preaching, um, you know, soul winning, things like that. The closest thing we found when we went on their website, I don't know if you remember this or not, Pastor, but uh, their outreach department, I was all excited. I thought, oh, maybe there's some outreach that are going on, was was basically uh, opening up like a, a, a makeshift coffee shop and inviting folks in the neighborhood to come in and talk and listen to, to music and drink coffee. 
And it's, that is not going and telling people and teaching and preaching the gospel. And so there's such a need, and that is a telltale sign of a true New Testament church, if they're actually fulfilling uh, the three, four aspects of the Great Commission. Yeah, no, the Lord Jesus Christ never said, you know, set up shop, put up a sign, and say, y'all come. That's not soul winning. That's not outreach. He said, go. Yeah. He, he said, you, the Christian, you go get them. You go talk to them. You go. Uh, he used it, uh, the same concept in the the, uh, the parable uh, uh, where he says, hey, you compel the, 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 the supper uh, and, and the king said, hey, go and, and compel men to come to my supper. He says, go and tell them. You, you not forcibly, not physically forcibly, but, try, you know, convince them to come into the church house. That's what we're supposed to do. That's, right. That's outreach. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we giving away food and things like that, going and raking up somebody's leaves, those are all good things, but that is not outreach. The outreach is, is doing something as a means to share the gospel. We have outreach events where we bring people into the church for a cookout, drunk or treat or whatever, but the gospel is shared. There's opportunities to trust the Lord as Savior. That That is essentially what, like you said, what it's, what it's all about in some way, shape, or form, fulfilling that great commission. Every thought that we have, every time we meet, every uh, suggestion that we've always, you know, talked about with Pastor Mix, we always ask the question of how is this going to fulfill the Great Commission? You know, which aspect of it, how is it going to be uh, utilized for the Great Commission of, of, of salvation, baptism, church membership, discipleship? Uh, because if we feed somebody, uh, but we don't share the gospel with them and they die and go to hell, well, what good did that, did that food do them? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, every, every part of the ministry, every part of the, a church, a local, a good, right, biblical New Testament church, uh, it, it will all be underlying every facet will be reaching souls. How can we reach souls? How can this ministry or this event or this activity or this, how can it help us reach more souls? Uh, that's We have to have that mentality. That's the heartbeat of the Lord. If we don't have that heartbeat, uh, then, then it's just a social club. It's mm-hmm. just a it's just a gathering place, and and I'm I'm not against gathering socially and having fun and all that, uh, and even in a good New Testament local church, they're going to do some of that. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, we're going to make sure that we don't uh, ignore those outreaching uh, methods just to have social social gatherings. If we're just having social gatherings, then we're not a true local New Testament church. Amen, absolutely. And and there's many reasons why we should go soul winning. Um, I put, put down a few, and if the Lord leads us, we may go over a few more. Uh, but let me ask you, Pastor Morales, wh- why should we go soul winning? Why should the, the Christian that's uh, a member of a local church and, and, and scripturally baptized go out soul winning? Well, number one, it's a command. The Lord Jesus told us to do this. He said go. Uh, he didn't say um Think about it. He didn't say pray over it. He didn't say if you have time, if it fits in your schedule, if you're not too busy. You know, I, I love I love how it's just plain and simple. Go, go ye therefore. Uh, he didn't say, you know, if, if you know if your if your schedule's too busy, then you know don't worry about. It. And, and yes, we understand there will be times in all of our lives where we kind of got hit, hit, hit the pause button here or there, whatever the case may be. But it it should never be an indefinite amount of time. It should be, okay, look, I need to pause here for a month or two months or whatever the case may be, or six months. But I'm definitely going to get back involved in the soul-winning arm of the ministry. It's a command. We need to go. Uh, he says, go you therefore and teach all nations. Uh, he didn't say, think about it. And then John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. If, if you love the Lord, then how can you not go? How can you not have a desire to see men, women, boys, and girls trust Christ as their Savior? I mean, uh, my wife, who who has, you know, her certain things that, that she struggles with, you know, maybe her legs ache and, and so, you know, that so forth and so on. There's people that have uh, physical things that limit them from pounding the paper. But there's avenues for even those people to still outreach and win souls. Uh, so we need to not let our physical limitations, you know, stop us from doing that. Yeah, absolutely. And we've been doing uh, Super Saturdays, which includes a team going out, uh, folks making lunch for everybody, those that can't go out, and even a prayer team. And so uh, you could you could be at the church praying through uh, and praying for the area that we're going to and those that are going out. 
And so there really is truly something for everybody. And just as much as the lady in the nursery has just as important of a role in the service as the man preaching behind the pulpit because they're, they're, they're watching children so, so folks can hear the gospel, it's the same thing. But you're 100% right. Uh, it takes us coming uh, even if we can't physically go out. Uh, also, I, I, there, was, there was a lady at our church in Cleveland that uh, her husband was a policeman, and so she, he had to work every other weekend. So she, she would come, even without him, on the weekends where he wasn't uh, able to come, he would come when he was able to, and she would come, and she's probably about five foot two, and she would come like seven, eight months pregnant with uh, two, two, two kids, one walking and one in a stroller, and she would come and still go out and hand out gospel tracts. It was such an encouragement and a blessing to me, which is probably you know another reason why we should go because of the encouragement that it is to others, as well as the blessings, because God, God blesses those efforts. Uh, everyone that I know that's a soul winner, the Lord really blesses them and takes care of them. Uh, not that they have a perfect life, but, but definitely a uh, blessing to them. And, Amen. And, and, and so you, you said, if, if you love me, keep my commandments. And, and uh, I mean, I, I don't know one Christian that would say that they don't love the Lord Jesus, but he's saying to keep my commandments, and this is one of them. I put down here Romans 5, 8, because uh, when I think about things that maybe I don't want to do, that I don't feel comfortable doing, I think of Romans 5, 8, where it said, but God commendeth or proved his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, while we were at our worst, Christ died for us. He already proved his love towards us. And, and, and if, if I can't come out of my comfort zone a little bit, you know, to either, you know, even simply, you know, go as a silent partner at first or, or things like that, then man, I, I've really missed the boat on how much he loved me and how much he did for me. Amen to that. And, and I'm glad you mentioned, you know, silent partner, you've mentioned several times, Hey, uh, maybe that's the role that you play. Maybe you come out and who knows, maybe that's what all you ever do is be the silent partner. But man, that that silent partner, which doesn't ever witness, doesn't ever necessarily be the the main speaking person. That that role is important. That role is vital, and we need to have people uh, in that two by two pairing. That one is the main speaker, and the other is hey, let's let's eliminate as many distractions as possible. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Now, I I, uh, I almost forgot to mention this, but Second Corinthians chapter five. Uh, here's another passage where the Bible tells us, hey, this is what we are supposed to do as Christians. Therefore, in verse 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We love that verse, right? You know, we're changed. We're different. Uh, God has made us new creatures in Christ. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, but tied to that same passage, in that same passage is verse 18. It says, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. He's reconciled. He's he's made the the relationship right and good and in good standing. Uh, now we're no longer the enemy of God. Through Christ, we're reconciled to God. That same verse says, and hath given to us, who's the us? Those of us that have been reconciled. He hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So now it's our job, those that have been reconciled, to help other people become reconciled. It says in verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. We see the ministry of reconciliation. We see the word of reconciliation. Uh, that means we're going to tell them the gospel. Verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. We're his ambassadors. We're his representatives. Uh, we are the ones that represent the kingdom of God to those that are unsaved around us. we got to tell them. We have the word. We have the ministry. We are that agent. We are the one that God is going to use. Amen. That's no, really good. That's really good. And what would you say would be the, the second reason that, that we would talk about uh, as, as far as why we should go so many? Because souls of men, women, boys, and girls hang in the balance. I mean, this is life or death. This is heaven or hell. Listen, this, this is the most important thing that any human being could ever do for another human being mm -hmm. is to tell them about Christ. Uh, never dying souls are going to spend eternity somewhere. And it is our job. It's our responsibility. It's our obligation to not, convince them and force them but to to tell them to warn them mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we are to sound the alarm. We are to let them know there is danger ahead. The bridge is out. You're going in the wrong direction. You need to turn around and turn to God. It's our job to do that. Amen. And one of my favorite quotes, and really one of probably the few that I use that actually didn't come from you, uh, is is without him, talking about God, without the Lord Jesus Christ, without God, without him, I can't. I can't go so winning. I can't do anything outside of the Lord Jesus Christ and his grace and his mercy and his strength. But, key word, right? But without me, he won't. God, God gives everybody the option. We could choose salvation and choose him, or we could reject him. Same with going soul winning and serving the Lord. We, he doesn't force any of us. He should. We would, I would think that he would. He should because he, 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 he reconciled us. He's the one who died for us. He's the one who saved us. It was all him. We just accepted it. Um, but he doesn't. He gives us the choice and the option. And so he won't force us to go. And so uh, think about that. Um, you know, if you're worried about going, well, without him, we can't. None of us could. And he will go with you. But without you going, without me going, he won't. There are people that won't get reached and won't hear the gospel because we're not willing to go. And he's not going to force us to. Amen. Aren't you glad that uh, we're not God? You know, the way we yeah. would do it would be totally wrong. Because <laughs> if, if, I, if I were God, you know, uh, I wouldn't be as gracious. Uh, I wouldn't be as merciful. I wouldn't be as long suffering. You know, I'd be more forceful. You know, obviously we're not God, but He is all of that. He's gracious. He's merciful. He's long suffering, and He's patient. And He's a perfect gentleman. Mm -hmm. He's not going to force you to do it. It's right for you to do it, um, but He's not going to force you. We we need to do it because we think about the we think about a real literal hell that exists. There is flame where uh, the, the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Uh, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for all of eternity, where there will be a pain and agony and sorrow for the rest of eternity. We need to understand that. We need to keep that in our forefront of our minds and say, man, I got to do my best to help that person avoid that. Now, I can't make them do it, but I got to at least warn them. I got to at least tell them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and anytime you want a sobering thought, go to the Gospel of Luke and read the, uh, the account of Lazarus and the, uh, and the uh, rich man. And I believe I believe it's Luke uh, 16. I could be wrong on that, but that's uh, correct. But, uh, but man, it, it's 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 literal. It's you know, the Lord Jesus Christ preached and taught on on hell more than he did heaven, um, and, and it's a real place that people are going to go uh, if we're not willing to go and share the gospel. Of course, the Holy Spirit's the one that does the work. You know, he's the one who convicts. He's the one who gives us the strength and the power, um, and we need to be right with him and walking in him. But if we don't go, we're the, we're the mouthpiece, and he, we need to okay. allow him to use us. First uh, Corinthians chapter six verse twenty says, "We are bought with a price; is therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's." Amen. And I and I, I I totally agree with you that we are God's mouthpiece. We are His ambassador. We are His agent. We are His representative. And in Romans chapter ten, the verses you have here, Pastor Sulio, they they fit this perfectly. Romans ten thirteen through fifteen, the Bible says, "For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved." Man, praise the Lord. Uh, whoever doesn't matter what nationality, uh, you know, what gender, none of these things matter. It's whosoever. Yeah, and because of that, I feel like you, you read that verse and say, "Well, because of that, then we have verse fourteen and 15. That's right. Which says, "How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear? There it is, right here, without a preacher." Without a preacher, we think, oh, that's that's the pastor. No, 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 no. That's every Christian. Every Christian is a preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's, verse 15 says, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. Yes, absolutely. And, and you're 100 right, because we see preaching, we think, behind the pulpit, preaching to, you know, hundreds of people. Um, and, and that is preaching. But preaching, uh, me is sitting in a truck or sitting on a couch, sharing with somebody else the gospel, uh, preaching them the gospel, is still preaching as well. And that's what that's talking about. And, Amen. And, and, and it says, except they be, be sent. And again, what we've talked about, the Great Commission, and the fact that it's a command, and he says it five times, I would say that it's very safe to say scripturally that we all, as, as, as Christians, uh, have been sent. Uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If they don't hear the word of God, if they don't hear the gospel, they can never uh, have that saving faith that is necessary. 
Yeah, I, I totally agree, Pastor Julia. I, I think um, this these verses spell it out very clearly. We have been sent. We have been reconciled to God. We know the truth. We have to share the truth. We it, it would be like like and you've heard me use this before. You've probably used it. These folks that are listening have probably heard this illustration before. It would be like us having the cure for cancer, right, and never sharing it with anyone if we don't go and witness. We have the cure for the spiritual cancer of the soul. We have the cure, the answer to their uh, eternal problem. We need to go share. We would be uh, we would be remiss if we had the cure for physical cancer and we never communicated that to anyone and people kept on dying from cancer. Man, that would be horrible. Well, translate that spiritually. We have the cure for hell. We have the cure for uh, spending eternity uh, in hell, instead of in hell with God in heaven, then let's tell people. Mm-hmm. Let's share it. Absolutely, and I'll let you sign off here in a minute, Pastor. But uh, one last thing, and you know, typically we're we're excited about uh, about the work of the Lord. We when we want to share, and we're, we're excited. We want people to grow. Uh, but th- this is a this is a sobering conversation, and I, and I want this to be uh, a serious thought. I want you guys to really think about this. Uh, we've talked about several times. First Corinthians fifteen three. Paul says, you know, the gospel that I preached unto you was one before shared unto me. And, and, and so I just want to ask, because not one of us is saved on our own. Not one person didn't have somebody share the gospel with them. And so, and so I, I just want to close with this thought. I want you to, as we're praying about our next step, and as we're going to come to Vision Night and talk about all the soul winning and the, the Super Saturdays and the, the soon-to-be Great Commission Night uh, that we're going to be doing, just imagine if someone hadn't shared the gospel with you. So spend some time thinking about what would have happened if somebody hadn't shared the gospel with you. I know me personally, Pastor, I think about the fact that not only would I have not been saved, uh, my marriage would never have been reconciled. Uh, my children, uh, my two year old babies, would never have trusted the Lord as Savior. They're not babies now, but they were at the time. Uh, my grandma, who passed away last year, wouldn't have trusted the Christ, trusted Christ and, and been in heaven right now. Uh, my mother, my uncle, and, and so many others that I've been able to, you know, be blessed to share the gospel with. But just imagine if someone didn't share it with me, uh, how many people could have died and gone to hell as a result of that. That is an extremely sobering thought. Uh, I oftentimes, you, you've heard me say this many, many times, how grateful I am for my stepdad, uh, who's with the Lord now, but he shared the gospel with Trina and myself back in 1993, and how much how much I feel a debt of gratitude to him uh, for, you know, going out of his comfort zone. It was uncomfortable, I'm sure, for him at that time. Uh, he was not living for God. He was in a backslidden condition. Uh, you know, he was doing things he knew he shouldn't have, shouldn't be doing, and the Lord was convicting him. And he started walking with God again, and that is what led us to question and ask and say, hey, what's going on? And, and he shared the gospel with us. Man, I'm so grateful for him. I thank God for him. I thank God for his mother. I thank God for uh, uh, evangelist Oliver B. Green, who uh, was ministered, who ministered to his family as they listened to him on the radio growing up. I mean, like you said, no one gets saved, you know, on an island all by themselves. It just it just doesn't happen. There's a lot of people that are behind it, and we need to be a part of the program. We need to be a part, however small or however big, we need to be a part of the program. And let's make sure that we don't fail those that are coming behind us, uh, those that God wants to use us to influence for his kingdom and for his glory. And let's not let's not uh, be lazy and, and, and selfish and say, well, I, I don't want to do that. Well, you know, it's our responsibility. Yeah, the, the Bible, I believe, I believe it's Galatians 6, 9 says, let, let, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. Amen. It's, it's our job, guys. Uh, it's our responsibility. You know, we could go into Ezekiel chapter 3, Ezekiel chapter 33. We, we, we're not going to do that now. But both of those passages talk about the watchmen on the wall. And the watchmen who, when they had walls around the cities back in those days, they were to blow, sound the alarm if there was an incoming, impending uh, judgment or maybe an army coming to attack. They were to sound the alarm to let everyone in the city know, hey, there's danger coming. Let's take shelter. Let's prepare. But if they didn't sound the alarm, if those people died, the Bible says that their blood would be on the watchman's hands. If they, he sounded the alarm and they didn't listen, 
then he would be free from that guilt. And so we are the watchmen. Uh, we are the watchmen in, in today's age. We are to warn people. Now, if they heed, fantastic. But if they don't, man, that's, that's, that's on them. But if we don't tell them, that's on us. It's on us. We've got to warn people. That doesn't mean that they're going to get saved. But that does mean that we're doing what we're supposed to do on our end to help them hear the alarm and be warned. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. We hope that um, we have been an encouragement to you. And uh, I hope, we hope, Pastor Susan and myself, we hope that this will encourage you to take your next step in your walk with the Lord. May God bless you. And again, if you need anything from us, if we can help you in any way, don't hesitate to contact us. Take care. Amen. God bless all.